Well, hello, hello, my dear viewers, my dear friends, welcome back to the channel. And today we have this week's chapter of One Piece, chapter 983. These are turning into a mouthful of its name, Thunder. And we begin, as always, by the cover story. <sighs> you guys know me. You guys know my opinion on this cover story and the direction it took. I am me. Like, this cover is just a whole bunch of coincidences. The whole story arc is just a bunch of coincidences. In the end, at least, at the, at the final part, it is a bit coincidental. Because, first things first, Pound managed to survive an attack from Oven, one of the most powerful members of the Big Mom Pirates. Then he somehow managed to drift away while badly wounded straight into Dressrosa. Third, whilst drifting to said Dressrosa, he was happily caught by the members of the Tontata Pirates that then number four brought him to the island to the shore where the Neo Nostra Castello I don't know if they're gonna call the ship the Nostra Castello I'm just calling it this because it's an unnamed ship, I checked so they brought him to the shores of, of where the Neo Nostra Castello is, is anchored all at the time where the fire tank pirates get there. Like, it's just very coincidental. Unless, of course, we see it in the prospect that, oh, the plan this all along, COVID breaks and everything, so this would take, so this would fall right into the Father's Day weekend. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go with the first one. By the way, Father's Day here in Portugal happened like two months, three months ago. Father's Day in Portugal is March 19. So I don't know why the rest of the world has it like this weekend on the 20th or, or 21st of June. I don't know. But yeah, it's probably we that are different. But happy Father's Day. If you are if you are a father and you're and you're watching this but let's let's avoid this cover I really hope it ends soon at this point I'd rather go back to to the request covers honestly because I don't feel like this cover has added anything. Then again, as I said, not all of them have to add things to the overall story. Gadatsus didn't have anything relevant to the story, and yet it happened. Like, the only thing it adds, if that's any good, was the fact that Gadatsu is now in the Blue Sea and works at a spa resort. A lot of people theorized back then that he could appear in the reverie just by accident. Just, just by existing, he would appear at the reverie as part of the Alabasta convoy. Of course, that didn't happen. That would be stupid. But yes, Gedatsu didn't, didn't add anything to the story. Bagi, in certain parts, didn't add anything to the story either. But this one, I feel didn't have the most like it served it will serve to close the chapter of Lola and Chiffon and Pound they will now join Cruz probably under Beji Pound will join them Lola and her crew will probably join as well since she'll most likely marry Goatee so they'll join under the fire tank pirates and the fire tank pirates will get a boost in membership just like that so we'll see but 
this is another surprise i was not expecting this and i honestly found it very funny that it happened Perro sparrow managed to create a sea, a sea slug and is on his way to Onigashima. I guess, I mean, I'm sure the anime will show this, no, no, no doubt about it. I'm sure the anime will show when this scene plays, I'm sure the anime will have a flashback scene of him jumping off the ship in a blaze of glory, making a, can a candy slug out of nowhere, in, in the middle of the air, landing it on the sea, and then boop, just sit down and let the others just sink in the waves beneath the waterfall of Wano. That is most likely what happened, ladies and gentlemen. I do tell you right now, this is most likely what happened. I like his bravado, because if nothing else, it makes me laugh. Because I don't care just how powerful Pero Sparrow is. He could be the heavyweight, the hidden gem of the Big Mom Pirates. He is, after all, the first son. He could be the hidden gem of the Big Mom Pirates, the, the strongest member of the, of the crew of a Yonko. Him alone can't do Jack. Mm. Because not do jack, but do jack s. So, Perro Sparrow invokes some pretty big names, King Straw Hat and Marco. So, yeah, sure, he goes like, I don't approve of this alliance, L boy. Maybe your mom doesn't even approve of you, let alone, what does it matter, you approving of the alliance? I mean, I guess it's okay to have Perro Sparrow there. I'm sure his presence will serve a purpose nonetheless, if nothing else, to be swiftly defeated by someone. Like, I don't know who, but I mean, I guess I do know who. I wanted Perro Sparrow to face off against Wanda and Carrot, preferably Carrot alone, and be defeated by her. However, I do not see what other purpose he can fulfill there, because if he is to appear alone, because as we discussed last chapter, it took them a serious amount of time to recover from the first fall. Whether that time was just picking all the members up again, or just straight up climbing the waterfall, because we do know that climbing the waterfall is not that time-consuming. Luffy and the Straw Hats did it significantly fast. However, they might have scattered and that's what took them the longest, because they took a few days to get back to the point where they were first thrown off by, by King. So, yeah, maybe Pero Sparrow didn't want to go to that trouble again. Maybe the maybe someone else is taking care of that smoothie, perhaps. But honestly, I don't see what the purpose of this first page was. Sure, it's interesting to see that Peril Sparrow is going to, towards Onigashima. But at this point, I mean, what's really the point? I, If you guys have any ideas, please do let me know. I will most likely enjoy reading them, but I honestly, I'm not seeing any point of interest except that he is to arrive and be defeated very swiftly by someone. But alas, we'll see. We cut back to the brothel area in Onigashima. I'm gonna call it a brothel because that's what it is. Sorry, Pleasure Hall. I imagine that this Pleasure Hall translation is sort of like a way to soften the word and the place in English because I'm imagining the English be like oh the kids cannot read the word brothel because it would send impure thoughts in their heads I give a lot of crap to the manga plus translation and I'm sorry for that as a fellow as a future fellow translator 
I do know how hard it is to translate from one language to the other, especially ones such as Japanese to English. But sometimes they do soften too much, like their translations go a bit too far, I imagine. And there's another example of that on this chapter that I do, really do not like. And then there's the names thing, but we don't talk about the names thing again. So yeah, Big Mom's managed to get a punch into the Brachio tank, and he transformed into the lower part of the General Frankie. Once again, this is just a nice tidbit that shows us that the General Frankie, the Frankie Shogun, will be used in one of some way or another. Frankie has the other part, and I don't know if there's any other part left. There's a brachial tank, and then there's and then there's the the rhino bike. I do not remember if there's anything left. It's been a while since we saw Frankie Shogun fully transforming, so it has been a while. Now we find out that Big Mom went after the after Nami's group, which makes sense because she, after all, she wants to get Zeus back. So if she wants to get Zeus back, it makes sense to go after the group that has Zeus. And yeah, Prometheus keeps calling Big Mom to her side. I saw a lot of people considering that the hypothesis that. Nami will get Prometheus eventually, just like she got Zeus. Honestly, if she does something in this arc to prove that she earned Zeus and that she could earn Prometheus, I will be all up for it. Because the thing is, Nami got Zeus in a sort of cheaty way. She didn't really... I don't want to... I mean, I said earn, but not really earn. She stole Zeus in very fashion, in very Nami fashion. She stole Zeus from Big Mom because, yeah, it... she could, and she did it, so it's okay, but she just she has a Yonko's weapon in her arsenal. Many people debate that Zeus got a downgrade in power after that. I don't want to think that he got a downgrade. Nami just didn't pull out his full potential yet. Because Zeus, Zeus can't just have a power downgrade. He's a freaking thundercloud. He is not something, he's not an entity that gets weaker. The only argument we could make for him to have gotten weaker is because of his separation from Big Mom directly. That, that is a possibility. But, 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 it still doesn't fully explain it. Because even if, okay, he gets weaker because he's far away from her, I mean, he's still a freaking thundercloud. He's not a person that can get hurt. Okay, except, except the time when Brooke injured Prometheus. And yeah, but I doubt Zeus could get hurt by someone that was not like an admiral. Like, imagine if he fought, if Nami fought against Kuzan and Kuzan just went like. Whoosh. And he freezed Zeus. Okay, then Zeus could be hurt and possibly defeated. But Nami won't fight Kuzan anytime soon. Let's face it. So, yeah. Enough with this tangent. We see Big Mom giving some life. Giving life to some objects. And it's really interesting. I saw that all these she gave life to resemble yokai from Japanese folklore. And that's... I remember the umbrella one from Neo. Those things are fricky as hell. But yeah, remember last time when I saw that we were due to some crucifixion time? Yeah, it arrived sooner than I expected, to be honest. I... I was not expecting this. This is very reminiscent 
of the Zoe situation and I imagine that should he remain like this for, for long, the scabbards will arrive and I know this is going to sound very sadistic but I really hope it does stay there just like until Inuarashi Nekomomushi arrived then because I think that's going to be the trigger that will send them berserk and like they'll blow a hole through the roof or something just to let moonlight shine in and they'll go ham so long on the beast pirates because they've been there twice I mean not twice but when they when they beached at only empty one oh they were sorta of crucified they were put on stakes rope put on stakes but they were truly crucified in Zo and they both lost a limb because of that. You know, Arashi lost a leg, Nekomamushi lost an arm. For them seeing, I mean, it will wait for all of them, but for them too, imagine if they see this. Imagine the shock. Imagine we see a page where the scabbards arrive, they blow a hole through the roof or through the wall or whatever, but something that leads to the outside so that the moon can shine because they've been Oda has been stressing out the fact that it's going to be on a full moon and that the Mings have a trump card and we know that it's so long that will have to play something in the battle imagine the scabbards arrive they blow a hole through the wall the wall is to the outside you can see the, you can see it's still cloudy but maybe not for long and then Inuarashi like looks and sees and goes like Lord like you can see tears coming to his eyes but tears of rage and then Nekomomushi sees, sees the same or hears him calling out to Momonosuke and he's like where what, what? Where, where is Lord Momonosuke and he looks and they both see the same thing and then you see all the other scabbards and then you see them too like click like black figures because Oda will not show the whole process of transformation you see them like growling and meowing and but the growling and meow starts getting more beastly and then all of a sudden you see mountains of beast pirate members flying everywhere and we see the crucifix being destroyed and then maybe one of them because I imagine that Inuarashi and Nekomamushi in Sulong, they are, as of this moment, the most proficient users of Sulong in the Ming tribe. They are the ones that get the most control out of it and they are able to hold it for long. Not like Karen, who could only use it for a while and definitely not like Peckham's who could barely use it without going berserk. So I do believe that Inuarashi and Nekomamushi do have a greater degree of control of their, over this too long transformation and then we see them probably like Inuarashi with Momonosuke on his on his arms like full so long and then we have a break next week <laughs> that's how I imagine big things happening but enough of a tangent yeah we see that Orochi managed to crucify uh, Momonosuke and it's a very sad scene like look at the poor kid like and the next shot, like the big pan out shot, it really shows how in this situation he's nothing. Like you can barely make him out in the cross. You know he's there, but you can't you can't even make him out. Like you know Queen's there, Orochi seems to be there, and Momonosuke is there, we know he's there, but the poor thing, you can't even see him. So this Speakable, Orochi, despicable. You are despicable. Yeah, then we change to Zoro. Zoro is fighting some gifters, like by some I mean a lot. And it's interesting that we get again a sort of confirmation that all members, at least all almost all the gifters, they were former pirate captains, much like the Tobiropo. So 
we can take from this that most likely all the members of the Beast Pirates are comprised of former pirate crews. Pirate crews that Kaido just amassed over the years, like beating to submission, probably after the God Valley incident, he started amassing followers like that. I'm followers, not followers, crew members. He started amassing crew members like that. He, he went berserk, he beat up a crew, and he said, well, join me. Not like Whitebeard, that you're my son now, join me. No, you're my subordinate, join me. I beat the living crap out of you, so you might as well join me or I'll kill you. And they go like, yeah, go on, give up, take the easy road. We've all been there, we all wanted to be Pirate King. But, well, we got beaten, so <laughs> no Pirate King for us. And yeah, like, these guys have lost their will. And so, yeah... I mean, it's interesting to see. It's a, it's a new crew dynamic. Kaido's crew is not bonded by loyalty or family or or even fear. I mean, it's not like they're afraid of him. They are. They are. But I think they are not afraid of him as, for instance, Big Mom's people are afraid of him. It's sort of a different kind of fear, if I make myself... Clear. But yeah, we cut to Kid and Killer who are also fighting gifters and pleasures and whatnot. A li an interesting detail, we see Yamato running, but we don't see him, but we realize upon a second reading that he's passing by because there's a there's two speech bubbles. One goes like, wait, sir, Master Kaido's looking for you. Don't concern yourself with me, just let me go. So yeah, Yamato passes through this moment and someone calls out for him but we don't get to know it at this point we just i mean we figure it, it is the early translations made this panel very unclear like super super unclear i didn't got it the first time only when i read the official translation i was like ah so that so that's what happened but yeah we then cut to Luffy's part, and this is the biggest part of the chapter. I don't even know how much time this video is already going by. Just let me check. Give me a second. Okay, so 23 minutes. We're still good. We have 10 minutes to get through the last part of the chapter. So yeah, we get to Luffy's, to Luffy's group. And um, it just shows, and this is really cool because Oda chose a fruit. And really, that's really suited for Ulti's personality. Like, Ulti goes, like, to Luffy, and he goes, like, how dare you do this to Pei Pei? And he's like, lady, please, you're the one who, who sled him down the stairs. And she doesn't even care. She doesn't even continue the, the conversation. Like... And Luffy, in true Luffy fashion, just goes like, I'm Luffy, the man who will be king of the pirates. It's been a while since we saw this, this sentence being thrown around. But yeah, Ulti just goes bananas and she goes like, yeah, no, no, you king of the <laughs> King of the pirates, you, no, that's gonna be Kaido, you ultra buffoon. So yeah, and she goes and we get the first named attack for one of the Tobiropu, Ulti Mota. Yeah. Again, name translations and whatnot are always are always fun. But this, I mean, I just love the imagery on this panel, like the panel when their heads clash, like Luffy's hair spikes up, Ulti's hair spikes up as well, but it's not like spiked. It retains that sort of curve the curved shape of her hair, it's really cool, and you can see that Luffy, and this is an interesting thing of this chapter, Luffy recognizes that she was strong, that she's strong, and that he was ill-prepared, because we see him struggling, but he realizes that he shouldn't have struggled, because he was careless, and yeah, Ulti blows a hole in the ground, the other guys recognize, the other guys believe that he's done for, but of course he's Luffy, he's not done for. 
But this is another interesting thing. Ulti and Page 1 are none for that. They are like, no, this guy's serious. So, <laughs> dinosaur up. We get the Ryurunomi ancient type model Spinosaurus from Page 1. We knew that already. But the big reveal comes from Ulti. Ryurunomi ancient type model Pachycephalosaurus. I did not see that one coming, but it is so fitting. It's so fitting, it hurts to think how fitting it is. Because for those of you who don't know by this point, uh, the Pachycephalosaurus the, the is that dinosaur with the big round up dome in his head and the spikes all around it so it's an extremely thick-headed dinosaur and it's fitting because all this personality is also very thick-headed she's a very thick-headed individual and not in the sense of stupid but she's just very arrogant and and she doesn't wield very easily from her position when confronted with others. She herself, she changes a lot depending on her moods, but not by the influence of others. So we saw that Luffy just admitted that, okay, but you were the one that did that to him. While she was like, no, you did this to him. And yeah, she doesn't get it. So it's very fitting. And we see the hybrid form, very cool. Her legs get longer and we see the, the, the hind legs the hands, the tail. The Pachycephalosaurus is also a dinosaur known for his like, quite long tail. Although it was not, apparently it was not a dinosaur that was like taller than your average human in comparison. But yeah, it wouldn't be the same thing if Ulti, an already petite figure, would have a dinosaur that would be the same height as her or even smaller. So. We get, we get the point. We're not here for realism and paleontology uh, perfectness, so yeah. But yeah, the gifters keep on going like, no, but he has to be done for. Do not concern yourselves transforming. And Ulti is like, then what the hell is that, Aki? And Luffy is like, oh god, my head. And he's like, I guess I underestimated you. This is probably the best sentence Luffy ever told. In the whole series, gotta be smarter. This is an emperor's castle. Boom! And saying that, Luffy just jumps, and we you see the point of it of, of surprise on their heads. He grabs Ulti by the horns, just smacks her into the ground. Page one goes for the attack. Luffy, Luffy like dodges and then disappears and appears beneath him. An elephant guns him into the into the mouth, like into the chin, if you can call that a chin, in, into the lower jaw, and blood, a little of blood spurts out. Really intense. Then Ulti, in their now full uh, full dinosaur form, we imagine, manages to grab Luffy, and we can see we see how bigger she is when compared to him in full dinosaur form. Luffy once again acknowledges how strong she is just by the grab. She goes for an attack, Ulti Meteor. Luffy went for a gear 4. We do not know if Boundman, Snake Man, or any other, probably a new one. I want to believe that this was a possibly new form of gear 4. Because Luffy has a tendency to start new forms or new attacks whilst in a dangerous situation, but that's not the dangerous situation of the arc, and then doesn't do it because something else happens. We, if you remember back in in Enya's lobby, he was about to go gear third against Bluno, but since he passed out from just gear second, Luffy didn't need to go gear third. So. I would like to think that this was probably a new form of Gear 4, but we'll have to see. And then we have it in a very cool, in a very cool scene. We have Raimei Hake 
once again i think that's the proper name of it i don't remember but we do not really know i mean i don't really know but yeah this is this is kaido son this is yamato and boy oh boy does he look stylish and yeah he uses the same attack as, as his father with a similar weapon as his father however he has to wield the mace with two hands which possibly shows that he is not as physically capable as his father because if you remember Kaido just managed to lug that club around with um, with one hand so yeah Raimei Hake the the same attack as Kaido and he managed to, to knock out Ulti who just passes out and falls everyone is surprised like oh is Master Yamato here what is he doing here why did he attack Ulti and then he picks up Luffy and they just run like he means he he says he means no harm to Luffy. Luffy believes him because he doesn't sense any hostility from him. And Yamato just goes like, I've been waiting for you, waiting for a long time. And he just drops the bomb by Yamato Kaido's son. And we have no chapter next week. <laughs> now, I want to focus, uh, for the end of this, of this video, I want to focus on this small panel of the I've been waiting for you, waiting for a very long time. Now, you know that when we first heard of Yamato, you know that I and many others, we put it out the possibility that Yamato was going to be an ally. And I specifically, went very strongly against that idea, because that, uh, that very possibility is very reminiscent of what happened in Old Cake Island. In Old Cake Island, we had three allied daughters of Big Mom. Sure, they had a, a, a larger force, but they had three daughters on their side, Pudding, Chiffon and Praline. So, it's Praline, her name's Praline, I remember. Um, so yeah, three daughters, at least, on their side. Like, I still hope that Yamato is not going to be a full-on ally. Like, we don't know who he is, we don't know what he looks beneath the mask. I've heard people saying that he's probably goofy as hell because that's the only reason why Oda hides him behind a mask. That we are gonna get a Duval syndrome again. That it's a guy beneath a very menacing mask. And then beneath it, boom, there's a doofus looking son of a gun just beneath there. But, I mean, I saw... And this was from Arthur, from the library of O'Hara. He drew some very, very scary similarities between Yamato's chains and the thing he has on his back, the, the rope thing he has on his back. He drew similarities to Odin's things. So... I mean, I do gotta say, they are similar, but... Oh. I mean, sure, it's not the same. It's not Odin that's here. Do, do rest. Do rest. It's not Odin. Like, it is not Odin. So, I mean, who is he? Like, is he really Kaido's son? Is he someone that Kaido is hiding and passing as his son? Because let's be honest. Kaido is a big dude. When I say big, I say huge. He's a huge dude. Like, 
There aren't a lot of ladies in the One Piece world that would be, let's say, comfortable both having and bearing with Kaido's humongous size, if you catch my drift. So, there's very few possibilities of for Yamato's parentage. He's a big guy. He is a big guy. He seems hunched, so we can't gauge properly his height. The first, I'm so sorry, I slept terribly this, this night. Um, the first spoilers put his size at roughly 5 meters, so around Katakuri height. However, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it. Then again, it's Oda's well-known well uh, sense of scale. So we might be looking for a surprise here. There's no official height yet. So I guess we'll have to see. So yeah, I mean, I really, I, I'm sorry. I just hoped that he was not going to be an ally, but sadly it seems it's going to be that way. I also read that the mask has a very big symbolism in Kabuki Place, so maybe that will be a hint for his overall personality, but I can't tell you more, I don't have any theories, other than the fact that I really did not want him to be an ally, but it seems that he, that he will be an ally. If he is to be an ally, at least let it be that he's not going to be like a key to defeat Kaido, that without him they will have no chance to beat Kaido, which will also most likely happen as well. So yeah, we the bang, we end this chapter. Next week there won't be no chapter of One Piece. Sadly, the next one drops on July the 5th. So, in two weeks' time, uh, also, for some reason, the next chapters will drop on the 26th, rather than the 28th. Uh, that, that is to mean Dr. Stone, My Hero Academia, uh, Black Clover. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's weird, I don't know why, it happens sometimes. But yeah, the next One Piece chapter drops on July 5th. So yeah, until then, we'll have to wait and see. But, my dear friends, my dear viewers, this is up for me for today. This is all I had to tell you about this week's chapter of One Piece. A really, really cool chapter. Luffy recognizing that the enemies are strong is a really good thing to see. And him realizing that he should have been a little bit more careful. Because he is, after all, in... A young girl's mansion. But, my dear friends, my dear viewers, this is all for me for today. I will see you guys next time. And bye-bye.